thing that you realise when you're in the presence of Tri Chimoy was that uh, he was an extraordinary man. He was a Renaissance man. I remember writing a letter to a very close friend while I was in New York the first time. So I'd only been coming to his centre for a few months. And I'd gone to New York City. This is 1981. And I wrote a letter to a friend and I said, there's only one word that can describe Tri Chimoy, and that's awesome. I said he has, he's tremendously powerful but the thing you feel amongst him is freedom because he's very spontaneous, very childlike, can be very intense but very loving. He'd, be, he'd do a 20 mile run, he'd come and play tennis for several hours, yet between sets of tennis he'd stop and compose poetry. It was like he, he had a full spectrum of, of capacities, yet he had the freedom to be able to go from one to the other and, and, and still be in charge of whatever he was doing. And so you, you came to realise that uh, you know, he's, he had tremendous capacity, but he also saw tremendous capacity in each of us. And I realised very early on that he saw far more potential in me than I did. And so he saw much better me than I did. And so when I was there, I, I did a marathon. And it was after the marathon, this is only a week after the half marathon, I ran a marathon. And afterwards he said, we're going to have some races tomorrow morning. And I said, the day after a marathon? And he said, come down to the local high school track and we'll have some races. And so we went down to the high school track and, and we weren't sure what was going to happen, but he said, we're going to do some short races. And so we did 100, 200, 400 metres, 600 metres, 800 metres, 1,200 metres and the mile. That's seven races in an hour. And, uh, and the amazing thing is that he'd personal best in every race, which still stand today. And this is the day after the marathon. And so... Even though we, when we were going down there, our legs were sore and lactic from doing a marathon the day before, because there were several of us who were in this category who had done the marathon, yet suddenly when we started running, all the pain disappeared. Even though it was very cold, the temperatures were close to freezing, there was little, even a little ice on the track. Yet somehow some grace descended that you, you can't explain, yet all the lactic disappeared and we were flying. And so I noticed this over the years that many, many people who did races when they were in Guru's presence or Sri Chimwa's presence, who they've been meditating with, they suddenly found they were doing lifetime personal bests. And so we realised very quickly the link between spirit and matter. And Sri Chimwa later said that many of the world records would be broken easy when people gave more attention to their inner life, their, their, their inner poise, their inner meditation. And it would bring forth a humility which would allow a grace to send from above, which would allow all the world records to be broken easily. And he said that's how the two-hour marathon will be broken and many, many other world records will happen that way. And, and we were, like experienced that in our own lives in our own very limited way because our times are very modest because we're just average, average runners. But in our own cases, and we had these experiences from being near Guru. Very, very early on we learnt these lessons.